Hello. This is a walkthrough of Philips Buy One Get Three or B One G Three Line Sudoku Six by Six Pack for Gas. So we have four puzzles here, and I'm going to go through each of them and explain the rules before I start. So in the first one, we have Anti Renvan, also known as Nabner, basically along. So normal six by six Sudoku rules will apply in all of these. So we'll have the digits one through six once each in each row and each column and in each two by three outlined region. In this puzzle, anti Renvan along each line digits that share a line can never be equal or consecutive. So for instance, if there was a two on a line somewhere, you could never have another two anywhere else on the line. You could also never have a one anywhere on the line. You could never have a three anywhere on the line. So no consecutive digits and no equal digits anywhere along the line. Now we have a zipper lines, six by six. So in this rule set, the digit in the middle of each line, so each line has odd length, and the digit in the middle is the sum of each pair of digits along the line that's an equal distance from the middle. And here, because all of the lines are length three, this essentially just means that we have a digit in the middle that is the sum of the other two digits. So for instance, the sum of these two cells is six. This is a mini whispers, uh, so it's a variant on normal 6x6 six six German whispers. Typically, when you reduce German whispers to 6x6, six six, you require digits along a line to have a difference of 3 or greater. In this variant, Philip has told us that digits correct, directly connected by a line have to have a difference of at least 2. So for instance, these two digits have to differ by at least 2. These two digits have to differ by at least 2. But because it says directly connected, it doesn't apply to, for instance, this pair of digits. But these two digits both have to be at least 2 different from the digit 6. And finally, we have modular lines. This refers to the idea of a modulus, which is also the remainder you get when you divide a value by another value. In this case, we're dividing by 3 and looking at the remainder. So the digits 1 through 6, when we divide them by 3, we get remainders of 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 0. And so that divides the digits into three groups based on what the remainder is when you divide them by 3. So 1 and 4 are a pair because they have a remainder of 1, 2 and 5 are a pair because they have a remainder of 2, and 3 and 6 are a pair because they have remainders of 0. Now in this rule set, along each line, we have three digits, and one of those three digits has to be in the remainder one group. So each line has to have either a one or a four. One of those three digits has to be in the remainder two group, so each line has to have a two or a five. And one of those digits has to be in the remainder zero group, so each line has to have a three or a six. So those are our four rule sets, and you probably noticed as I was explaining them that the gimmick here, which I think is very, very clever and very funny, is that all of these puzzles are identical except for the color of the lines and the way the rules are written. So they all solve differently using different sets of rules. Um, I'm not going to reveal whether or not any of them have the same solution as each other, but the solve path is certainly different for all of them. But the puzzles are visually virtually identical, and the placement of the lines and the givens is the same. So let's start with this anti renban puzzle. So I have some givens on lines already, and that's going to restrict what else I can put on the line, so I'm going to start by marking those. So I have a 3 on this line, so these two digits can't be 2 or 4, and they can't be 3. So they have to be 1, 5, or 6. Now that's not a 1, because there's a 1 in the column. Now, if these were both 5 or 6, those would be consecutive, and that would break the line. So this can't be 5 or 6, because then we would have two 5 or 6 digits, so that must be a 1. Now, along this line, we have a 2 already, so we can't have a 1, 2, or 3 anywhere else along the line. So, we need to only place 4, 5, and 6 here. Now, it's going to be difficult to make these digits not consecutive with each other. The only way we can make a non-consecutive pair out of these two digits is to have them be 4 and 6, and the 6, of course, can't be in that position. The 6 makes this a 5. We have a given on this line. That doesn't give us as much as this one did. It only eliminates um, 1 and 2 from the line. So these can only be 3, 4, 5, and 6, and we can make some quick eliminations here. 
We have a 6 there, and that eliminates 5 and 6 from the rest of the line, so those can only be 1, 2, 3, or 4, and again, just some quick pencil mark eliminations. Now we're going to take a moment and do some Sudoku. So we have two ones already in columns on the left side of the grid. That sees these four cells between them, so that's going to have to be a one. We have two sixes here on the right side of the grid. Together they see these four cells, so this is going to have to be a six. Now if we look at those columns, because they're starting to become restricted, we still need a two, four, and six in this column. Sixes already appear in two of the rows though, so the six has to be here, and these two cells are our two and four. And symmetrically, we still need a one, three, and five on this side. We already have ones in these two rows, so our one has to go here, and then this is our three and five. So if we look at what we just placed, we only have one position we can put a two in in this row at this point, and that's here. That means these two digits, since this row is almost complete, are 2 and 3 in some order. I can also eliminate 6 there. So let's revisit these anti-run band lines. So here, it's now going to be pretty difficult to make these not consecutive, because if this one was a 4, then that would have to be a 5. That would be the only remaining option, and they would be consecutive. So that can't be a 4, it must be a 3. But even if this is a 3, to keep these from being consecutive, that has to be a 5. And that's going to resolve this digit this digit, and not quite resolve this digit, but we'll leave that for now. By Sudoku, we now get that this is a 2 and this is a 3. That's a 5, that's a 2, and a 3. And I believe we're going to get a bit more Sudoku here. So these have to be 4 and 6, and because there's a 4 in the row, this is a 6. Our last digit here is a 6, and I can confirm that the digits along this are never consecutive. 1 and 5, digits along here are never consecutive. And what do I need to place here? I need a 2 and a 4. Couple reasons that can't be a 2. Can't match that 2. And also, my 4 can only go in that position. Now these are 1 and 2. That's 5 and 1. This is a 3 and a 5. And we are finished with the first buy 1 get 3 puzzle. Crossing the streams, anti run ban. Zipper lines. Okay, now we're dealing with sums, and what's jumping out at me is that I have this 3 on the end of a line, which means that whatever this middle digit is, it's definitely going to have to be bigger than 3. In fact, it's going to have to be something where I can add 3 plus this to get the middle value. So the middle has got to be 4, 5, or 6. And that's 1, 2, or 3, because 1 plus 3 is 4, 2 plus 3 is 5, 3 plus 3 is 6. And I can do something sort of similar here, I guess. I'm not sure I want to pencil mark it, because there's going to be even more options than there were over here. So let's see what else we can do for now. So 6 has to be... There are three ways we can make 6. You'd think there were only 2, 1 and 5, 2 and 4, but because these two ends are in different regions, we can actually also use 3 and 3. So let's mark those out and let's see what happens. So 1 and 5 could only orient this way. 2 and 4 could only orient this way because of the 2, and then we could also have 3 and 3 there. All right, that's not incredibly fruitful. Um, how about this 1? So 1 plus something is our middle digit. Well, our middle digit by Sudoku can't be a 1, obviously, because that would also be in the same box. Can't be a 6, can't be a 3. So it's got to be 2, 4, or 5. So the digit here that adds to 1 to make 2, 4, or 5 is going to be 1 lower than each of those. So 1, 3, or 4. All right, nothing just yet. So, let's look for something else we can do. Okay. And I did test this. I am not remembering at the moment what the next step is, but we're going to figure it out together. Fear not. So this cell by Sudoku is pretty restricted. It can't be a 1, a 3, a 5, or a 6, so that must be a 2 or a 4. And same with this cell. It can't be a 1, a 2, a 4, or a 6, so it must be a 3 or a 5. And that's interesting to me because the central digit, therefore, has to be bigger than 3 because 3 is part of the sum that composes the central digit. But it can't be 4 or 5 by Sudoku, so it must be 6. And so this is 3 or 5, so this is whatever adds to 3 or 5 to make 6, so this is either 1 or 3. 
Now, by Sudoku over here, these cells can't be 6. This one also can't be 6 because 6 is far too big to be part of a sum. So 6 is in one of those two cells, and I'll corner mark those. I suspect we can get something similar going on on this line. So whatever this is has to be bigger than 2 because 2 is part of its sum. So it's 3, 4, 5, or 6. It's not 5 or 6 because we have a 5 or 6 in the row. So it is 3 or 4. Therefore, this can no longer be a 4, because if this was a 4, we would have to add a 0 or a negative 1 in the cell in order to make a sum of 4. So this is now a 2. That's going to simplify things here, since this cell can no longer be a 1. And that gives us a 3, 4 pair, which gives us a 1, 2 pair in these cells, which resolves. That makes this a 3, and because of the 3 being on the 6 line, it, that's a 3 as well. 6 is now 2 plus 4. 5 is 4 plus 1. The central digit here is a 3, making this a 1. And these cells are occupied by 2 and 6, and we know the order thanks to this 2 in column 1. The last digit in this row is now a 5. So my digits here have to be 1 and 5. By Sudoku, they go in that order. And 5 is 1 plus 4. My digits here have to be 4 and 6. By Sudoku, they go in that order. And also, I'm saying by Sudoku, but I could also work this out by the fact that the middle digit on each zipper line has to be the biggest digit along that line. So if I have a 4 and a 6, I know the 6 has to be the middle digit. Same with 1 and 5. So I have a couple of ways of observing that. 6 is 4 plus 2, so I'm going to place a 2 here which gives me a 3 as my last digit in this column. 3 plus 3 is 6. Here my last digit is a 1. 1 plus 2 is 3. These cells contain 5 and 6. This is a 2. It's my last digit in the region. That's a 1, and these are 4 and 5. And I'll let you just look at that for another moment. I know I flipped away from that really quickly. <laughs> OK. Buy 1, get 3, crossing the streams mini whispers. So digits that are adjoined to each other along an orange line have to differ by two or more. So restrictions here are going to come from having kind of middly digits along a line, because those are going to um, be pretty limited in terms of what digits they can be two or greater from. So three can't be next to another three, of course. It also can't be next to a two or a four. So it has to be next to 1, 5, or 6, but because there's a 1 in the column, that's a 5 or a 6. And I'm not going to pencil mark this because I suspect this isn't going to be restricted yet. We'll come back to it. 2 can't be next to 1, 2, or 3. Those are too close, so it needs to be next to 4, 5, or 6. 6 can only be next to 1, 2, 3, or 4. And I'm reluctant to put in that many pencil marks, but I'm going to just go for it. Um, 1 can't be next to 1 or 2. It also can't be next to 3 or 6 by Sudoku. So this needs to be a 4 or a 5. Now, what can 4 and 5 be next to? So I don't think it's worth pencil marking that yet, because 4 can be next to 1, 2, 6. 5 can be next to 1, 2, or 3. That's pretty open. But while I'm looking at that, I've just noticed that in this row, 2 is prevented from appearing in this position, and also based on the variant rule, 2 can't appear in any of these positions. So 2 must go there in row 3. And 2 can't go next to 1, 2, or 3, or 5 by Sudoku, so that's going to be a 4 or a 6. Now what looks the most restricted to me at this point? So what is standing out to me at this moment is the fact that I have all three low digits placed in the same region in region 3 here. So the only remaining digits I have here are 4, 5, and 6. Now these have to be at least 2 apart, so the only way I can get there is by making them 4 and 6. 4 and 5, 5 and 6, those don't work. Those are too close together. So that's a 4, 6 pair. This is a 5. This is a 4, 6 pair vertically, so this is a 5. Now we're cooking. So these are 2 and 3. That's not a 5. This has to be 3 or 4, but it's not a 4. So that resolves this. And now my two remaining digits in this region are 1 and 5. OK, what can 5 be accompanied by? So 5 can be next to 1, 2, or 3. 
And it can't be next to 4 specifically, which tells me the only place I can put 4 in this entire region is right here, because this 4 sees these three cells, and this 5 keeps me from placing a 4 above it. So that's now going to be a 4. That makes this a 6 and makes this a 4. 4 could be next to a 6. It also could be next to a 1 or a 2. Now what do I still need to place here? So I do still need a 6 in one of these cells, and I also need a 1, 2, or 3. This could be a 1 or a 2. It can't be a 3. It could also be a 6. This could only be a 1 or a 6 by Sudoku, because I have a 2 and a 3 in the column already. Now I need a 1, 2, 3, and 6 to fill out this row, and the reason I'm pencil marking that, even though this row is pretty unrestricted, is because I see that there are going to be additional restrictions coming from this 3. So this 2 and 3 eliminate 2 and 3 as options here, but also this 3 eliminates 2 and 3 as options here, because 2 and 3 are too close to 3. So I can eliminate 1 because I have a 1, 6 pair, and now this is a 2, 3 pair, and now this is a 2, 3 pair, so I can eliminate 2 there. So these digits are 2, 3, and 5. Okay, the next thing I'm seeing, which um, I only just noticed because I was looking at my red pencil marks, <laughs> is that this 4, 6 is now resolved by the 4 I placed earlier. And that 1, 6 is resolved by that. That resolves this 5 and this 1. This is no longer a 6. This is no longer a 5. So my 5 goes there by Sudoku. These digits are 2, 3, and 4 in some order. This can't be a 2, because 2 is too close to 1. These digits are going to be 1 and 5, and because there's a 5 in this row, that's our 1, and that makes this a 2, 4, 3. And I think that Sudoku is going to take us the rest of the way there. This has to be a 1 or a 6. Ah, we don't get quite the rest of the way there with Sudoku. We need to use the variant rule one more time to observe that 5 and 6 can't be next to each other on an orange line. So that's a 1, and there we go. Last puzzle, modular lines, the last of four puzzles from Philips Buy One Get Three mini pack. So each line has to have a 1 or a 4, a 2 or a 5, and a 3 or a 6. And what does that tell us? Well, the first thing I noticed when I was test solving this one was that this 4 and this 5 even though it doesn't look like it at a glance, they're actually probably the most powerful digits in this puzzle because they see the entirety of this line and this line, in the case of the 5. And every line has to have either, for instance, a 1 or a 4. And so this line can't have a 4 on it, and that tells us it must have a 1 on it. This line can't have a 5 on it, and every line has to have a 5 or a 2. So it must have a 2 on it. Now we know that the 1 is here or here. So we can't have another 1 or a 4. So these digits, the remaining digits on that line, have to be from 2, 3, 5, and 6. This cell can't contain 2 or 6, so it must be 3 or 5. All right, there's already a 3 on this line. So we can't have another 3, and we can't have a 6 because we've already used one digit from that group. So we need a 1 or a 4, and we need a 2 or a 5. We already have a 2 on this line, so we can't have another 2, and we can't have a 5, so we need a 3 or a 6, and we need a 1 or a 4. That wasn't as productive as I was hoping it would be. Um, <laughs> and I promise I did test this beforehand. Um, it's just a challenge to remember every solve step in something like this, where you have four puzzles you're trying to kind of keep organized in your head simultaneously. All right, by Sudoku, there needs to be a one in one of those two positions. So we have our one on this line. And that means we can't also have a four on the line, because we only have a single digit that's modulo one, so we only have a single digit from the set one four. So where does 4 go in this box? It goes here. So that's not a 4. Now that we know that there's a 4 on this line, we have a, we have a digit from the 1, 4 group. We have a digit from the 3, 6 group. We just need a digit from the 2, 5 group to fill things out. So that can't be a 5, therefore it's a 2. Can we do something similar here? We need a 2. Oh, we can, actually. So this 3 
sees these cells, so it makes this a 3. So these are 1 and 5. So the last digit we need has to be from the 3, 6 group. That's the only group that isn't represented on this line yet. So that's a 3, not a 6. Now we need a digit from the 3, 6 group on this line. And it has to be a 6, and it has to go here. And now this is from the 1, 4 group, and we don't know which digit it is yet. Now 2 and 5 have to go in these positions, and this 5 makes sure that this is going to be a 2. No, that's a 5. So we have a 1 and 5 here, so we need a digit from the 3, 6 group. These have to be 4 and 6. So the groups that are represented are the 1, 4 group and the 3, 6 group. So now we need a digit from the 2, 5 group. It can't be 5, so it's 2. And now we need a digit from the 2, 5 group on this line, so that's going to be a 5. So now these two cells contain 1 and 4, because those are our only two remaining digits in the row. This 4 makes this our 1, and that's our 4. That can't be a 2 by Sudoku, this is 3 or 6. That's 4, and that is 6. By Sudoku, we can place our 3 and 6 here. That's going to be a 1, so that's not a 1. And we worked out quite some time ago that we have to place a 1 along this line somewhere, and now it can only go there because we just eliminated the topmost position, and that 1 makes this a 5 and a 1. That's now a 5 by Sudoku. 2 and 4 go there and there, so now we have used 2, we've used 4, and we don't know which of these two digits we're going to use because they're from the same group, and it's the group we need. But by Sudoku, we can figure it out. So this is a 6. That means in this top row, this has to be our 3, and this is our 6, because the 6 couldn't go there. And we can finish the puzzle off, and there we are. That's how you solve all four of Philip's Crossing the Streams mini gas pack puzzles.